Female genital mutilation has been identified as one of the causes of maternal mortality, reproductive infections and diseases. Despite its negative consequences, at least 200 million girls and women alive today have undergone some form of FGM in 30 countries. To curb this menace in Nigeria, former First Lady Stella Obasanjo on February 6, 2003, made the official declaration on zero tolerance to female genital mutilation in Africa. The historical day has also been part of a combined effort by the UN to meet one of its sustainable development goals, which is the elimination of FGM in a key target under goal five. And now we're joined by Raymond Dokbani, founder, Youth Pan Africa. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Thank you so much. All right. What's peculiar about this year's theme? Okay, um, I'm so happy to be here. Um, the theme, like we know, it's centered around unleashing youth power. Uh, for me, there are two basic uh, peculiarities as it has to do with it. First is that um, uh, the effort of young people, they're beginning to recognize the effort of young people in combating uh, the, the harmful traditional practice of female genital mutilation. It's very peculiar, not because young people were not doing anything in the past, but because it was very, very, um, probably uh, it was actually at the backside. Nobody was, it was not visible, kind of. So people were always shut out when they want to come up with issues like this. That's the first reason. Second peculiarity is that it's beginning to also project the potential of young people as um, as possible target, as um, um, the possibility of engaging young people's potentials, you know, to fight the prior traditional practice. Because we have the energy, we have the determination, we have the drive, we have the zeal, in the sense that if young people can put their voice towards a particular, solving a particular problem, nothing will ever stop them from achieving it. Okay, can you make a distinction between, because uh, people talk of FGM and then they talk of FGC. Um, I think the other one is circumcision? Yeah, female circumcision. Yes, what was the difference? Let's clear that out. So I, I think we need to also make this clear because um, the first of all, the female genital mutilation, it's also important that people get to know it is the total or partial removal of the female external genitalia. genitalia for non-medical reasons, um, but uh, circumcision, no, because uh, uh, the, circum the only place circumcision was actually adhered to is when it has to do with the male circumcision. But when you are tampering with the female external genitalia, you are not circumcising. You are actually tampering what was originally kept there. It means that you just came to where something was positioned and you are saying, no, it's not this way. So when we talk about, um, there have been a lot of people that have been misplacing usage of words, they call it female genital circumcision. But again, some other people have taken to say it's not circumcision. Rather than saying circumcision, use female genital cutting. So that's where you see FGC and you also see female circumcision. Uh, for people that are, uh, let me just say they're ignorant, but there is nothing like female circumcision. You can only say female genital cutting or female genital mutilation. Okay, uh, let's look at the figures now. Um, the UN is saying as of 2020, 4.1 million girls are likely to get um, mutilated. Yeah. Why is this figure still high, considering the efforts that were like with, from group like yours and others in trying to create awareness and letting people change their mind based on what is realistic? Yeah, I, I think uh, uh, it's, it's FGM is actually embedded on the culture of the people. And when things are involve culture, it's not something you just come out from the blues and decide this, you just gotta stop this. It's like getting into someone's house. It's like you just come into someone's house and you want to change one of the things they treasure most in their house. We've had issues where we we'll go for um, advocacy or campaigns or sensitization in communities and the community will literally fight back, like fight back violently because this is something they cherish according to their belief. Either it is as, as a result of rite of passage, either it, they are trying to use it to promote uh, the female uh, fertility uh, chances and or they are trying to use it to ensure purity of a lady. So it means you are coming to defy what makes them unique and what makes them them. So Is that the, still the situation in Nigeria today? Uh, no, there have been a lot of sensitization. There have been a lot of, I can tell you, 
there are a lot of engagement across all sectors. We've engaged uh, traditional rulers, uh, religious leaders, uh, lawmakers, security agencies, uh, teachers, um, and even the circumcisers themselves, the people that actually perform the practice. There have been uh, some communities have gone ahead to even conduct what we call the public declaration of female, uh, abandonment of female genital mutilation. So, but again, because it's also embedded on people's culture, you can't say it has actually stopped because for um, there is also limits to the uh, no, number of uh, people that have been probably prosecuted. And I know I can tell you the reason. It's because we need more communities to come out to declare openly. It is on that basis that you can enforce laws and probably get to prosecute people. But as for awareness, it's very, very high across communities. But I can't say it's actually, um, it's doing a lot of work, but more work still needs to be done. done. Yes. Okay. How uh, do we get adolescents and young people, as it were, to understand the ills that come with female genital mutilation? Because they are the focus of the UN this time, trying to get the youth uh, a bit more involved. So yeah. how will that work? Uh, it's important that young people um, are involved because, I mean, our our grandmothers and mothers and all the elderly people who started this one we don't know are beginning to phase out their generations are phasing out leaving out the current dispensation of your generation of young people and we must understand one of the best ways to start engaging young people is for us to understand that if you are not affected directly you are affected indirectly because if it's not um, if you are not affected by your sister we have friends who have teachers who have colleagues who have bosses who have people and depending on how it affects those people, probably psychologically, uh, it leads to low productivity, it leads to increased mortality rates, people are having a lot of health complications and all that, it falls back on you directly or indirectly. So young people need to understand that we have a role to play because it affects us whether directly or indirectly. Uh, that's one of the ways I think um, young people need to start getting involved. Secondly is that um, uh, we need to also get young people to also see the, the 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 connection between this practice and development and our own development our capacity to grow in all sphere because the issue of women uh, women are very 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 important uh, as far as any development is concerned and not just development sustainable de development if you must sustain any project if you must sustain any any idea anything whatever it is you must have the full backup of the women folk uh, folk in, in that and in that and imagine if a woman has been uh, tampered with and she's not uh, well positioned, she's not in the right, um, frame, right of frame of mind to be able to deliver effectively. Trust me, there is way, a lot of limits to what we can achieve as male folks. So, and, and for young people, because we are growing, uh, if we're not married, we're going to get married, we're going to have children, it's, uh, it's also, and again, if you get married and then your wife is uh, starts suffering the consequences, then you would have failed having done your assignment as a young person. Okay, do you envisage a time with all the campaign that's ongoing from the UN locally and with groups like yours, do you envisage a time when we will no longer be talking about ending female genital mutilation, but talking about celebrating the end of female genital mutilation? Yeah, um, I, I think, yeah. Yes, I know that there, I think there's a time it's going to happen. How Maybe, soon? Uh, I can't say how soon it is because um, it's the, the, the soon will be dependent on the intensity of the action, right? Because if you say, okay, we're mapping out, like right now, the goal is to end, 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 uh, end female genital mutilation by 2030. If we fold our hands right now, even if we have 50 years, nothing will happen. But if we set a, a deadline and then we even increase our actions, our goals are clear, what we need to do are clear, and we go ahead to do them, I think we can achieve that before 2030. Thank you very much for your time on the news. Thank you.